How did you feel when you realized that January 6th wouldn't be the end of Donald Trump's hold over your party? Just a really sick feeling, and I had to, at that moment, make the decision that I am willing to stand alone in this battle. Adam Kinzinger is a rare Republican for his defiance of Donald Trump. President Trump ultimately wanted the Department of Justice to put its stamp of approval on the lies. The former Illinois congressman, once a rising Republican star, ostracized from his own party after he stood up to Trump's false claim that he won the 2020 election. He was willing to sacrifice our republic to prolong his presidency. Adam Kinzinger. And now the conservative is campaigning for Kamala Harris. I am proud to be in the trenches with you. What Kinzinger calls a fight for democracy has come at great personal and political cost. We have got a January 6th hearing that is going to start in like an hour. All of it detailed in a new documentary, The Last Republican, premiering at the Toronto International Film Festival. With this documentary, you're at first letting a film crew and now audiences into really intimate moments of your life at a difficult time in your life. Why was it important for you to do that? Well, it was a couple things for us. So we knew that this was going to be a very historic time and we knew there was value in capturing that. And I think it was important to show the human cost of doing the right thing. January 6th changed the trajectory of Kinzinger's career and life. He and Liz Cheney were the only two Republicans to serve on the congressional committee that blamed Trump for that dark day, prompting a barrage of death threats against Kinzinger at his Capitol Hill office. Wait till we're outside your fucking house, you traitor. We're going to line you up on a wall and take care of all your traitorous asses. Kinzinger says he regrets nothing and is angry more of his former colleagues refused to act. Any room you walk into as a member of Congress, except the White House, you're the most powerful person in that room. So over time, people don't want to give up that title. They're not ready to. And they make little tiny compromises in their soul to be able to stay in good graces. And eventually you compromise enough of yourself that you either convince yourself you're doing the right thing or you convince yourself that you can't go back. You think your former colleagues believe they're doing the right thing or is it more on the politics side of it? That's a really good question because if you put them on, say, the CIA truth juice, right? If you put them on that, they would probably tell you that this guy's crazy and we shouldn't be doing this, but I've got to survive this next election. And I think a lot of them have convinced themselves that this is the right thing to do. As someone who's had a front row seat to 2020, January 6th, what would you say about the overall fragility of democracy, not just in the United States, but just generally? Democracy is much more fragile than I ever thought. On January 5th, I never knew that I could actually lay out a scenario where I would see democracy failing. And today I, I could do that. And what I have learned is that Canada, the UK, Australia, and some of our closest allies like Germany, a lot of the times political trends are just five years behind wherever the United States is at on some of those political trends. So never embrace extremist movements, right or left. Stay in the middle, you know, expel them, isolate them, and continue to govern through democracy. That was Kinzinger's message when he spoke at the Democratic National Convention. Some have questioned why I've taken the stand I have. The answer is really simple, ladies and gentlemen. We must put country first. What was that like for you? Because at the end of the day, you're still a conservative Republican. So it was unique, right? Um, I never thought 10 years ago I'd be speaking at the Democratic National Convention, but it wasn't that hard of a decision at all. I mean, literally, I think the future of democracy hinges on what happens in November. And so I knew that we needed to reach Republicans. And, you know, it just goes to show this belief that I have that we have to have this awkward alliance to defend democracy. And so looking towards November then, what role do never Trump Republicans like yourself, like Liz Cheney, have to play? Is it about appealing to voters in the middle, the undecided? What is your role? Our role is, look, there is probably 20 to 25 percent of Republicans that feel ashamed that Donald Trump is the nominee. I think our message is to those disaffected Republicans to say, it's okay to, to vote kind of against what you believe. And so that's what we're out there to do. But I think whichever party, and Democrats are in a better position to do it, can embrace people like me, which is a significant amount of the country in the middle, 
that will be the party that can stay in power for a long time. Kamala Harris, as you know, said she would appoint a Republican mm -hmm. to her cabinet. Would you be interested? It depends what it is. Certainly, like, I would be interested. It's, it's an honor to be able to do that, and, you know, being on the cabinet is a huge deal. I wouldn't take just any job, you know. For me, it, I would have to have passion about it. It would have to be something I know I'd be good at. Have there been discussions? Not yet, no, uh-uh. No. And you wouldn't tell me even if there were, I, I am sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but before any new government can be formed, there must be a peaceful transition of power. And Kinzinger says in America today, there's no guarantee of that. If Donald Trump loses again, what do you think we'll see? Another refusal to accept the results, a repeat of January 6th? I certainly think he'll never admit he lost, ever. Where I think the real concern is, and actually worries me a little more than January 6th, is at the different state house levels. So you can imagine a state where it's run by a Republican governor or a Republican legislature. The legislature is the one that actually has to determine who won that election. But if a Republican legislature basically determines, like, we're not going to certify Kamala Harris's win in Arizona, you can see violence popping up there, you can see militia intimidation at the state houses, and you can see a real constitutional crisis. How concerned are you? Pretty concerned. I think if Donald Trump loses, to steal his word, bigly, then I think we're in a much better position. But if it's close like it looks like it's gonna be, you convince a significant amount of the population that their vote doesn't count, I think violence is not an unexpected result of that.